Hey, how's it going? It's Chasey Boo here, and today, <laughs> I don't know why I started my video like that. I'm trying to start a new intro, maybe? Mm. Many a people ask me, how do you start hormones? And people actually want me to make a video about this. So like, I might as well know that it is different in every part of the world, probably, kind of. Um, so I will like situate where I am and then we can like talk about it. I live in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. All right, so I'm gonna talk about my experience and then I'm gonna talk about different experiences from different places in the world that I know how you can do it so we can talk about it. So here in Canada that I'm aware of, please, if you have any other uh, ways of doing it, put it in the comments, discussion, we do this. There's nothing wrong, we're just talking. Two ways. Number one is the kind of like the longer way that you have to go. So. One, you have to find yourself a therapist. Easier to find yourself a therapist who kind of like specializes in trans issues. So if you live in Canada or America, you can go ahead and go online and search for these therapists. Therapists are really expensive, but some of them work on sliding scales. What happens at your first appointment is that you just talk about your life. You talk about maybe like you explain to them why you're there. You tell them, hey, I'm trans. Like, um, I either want to talk about this, um, explore this more, or I'm looking to get my letter for hormones. Just say it. Hey, might be different for some therapists. They might not want to hear um, right away that that's all you want is their hormone letter. But you know, the reality is it takes some time and it's great to just like let it all out, especially if it's a lot of money. I can't tell you how many sessions it takes. Um, for some people, it takes eight months. For some people, it takes one month. For some people, it takes one session um, to get their letter for hormones. It's almost like you have to convince them. But like, honestly, you feel you. If you feel like you need to go on hormones, you talk to the therapist. You tell them everything so that they know, so that they can give you your letter. Once you have your letter, you need to find yourself an endocrinologist um, or a family doctor if your family doctor like is okay with trans things and understands how to treat medically trans people. My family doctor was an asshole and literally said, you're fine with being a girl, don't change. I never went to him again, don't worry. Anyways, so you find yourself an endocrinologist, best bet. Um, you can even Google endocrinologists that work well with trans people or who have experience with trans people. The endocrinologist that I have, he's like every trans person. Like seriously, every time I'm in that office, I'm like, I see you. Once you find yourself an endocrinologist, the first appointment, don't expect to get your hormones right away. Most of the time they make you go get a blood test and then like a month later you can go ahead and get your, uh, your hormones, which is fantastic. So that's basically how you start hormones. That is like the traditional way, I guess. There actually used to be a program in Montreal from like the Montreal General Hospital that you can go through to get your hormones, but I actually applied to go when I was 18 and they rejected me. You know why? They said I wasn't trans enough. I know. I, let's, whatever. I'm glad I didn't go, it was expensive as Anyways, so. The second way that you can get hormones here is you can do the informed consent way. Now this way is not only in Montreal, obviously, it's all over Canada and the United States. I believe it started in Seattle. I believe that's where it started. So what is informed consent? There are some clinics that you can go to, you make an appointment, you sign a little paper, and you get your tea right away. This means that you don't need to go and get yourself a letter and spend all that money on seeing a therapist that's just like gatekeeping and you're just like, I need to be on hormones right now. We know ourselves, we know when we want hormones. And the thing with informed consent is that you're signing the paper. You're saying I consent to having this without having a doctor's letter. Because the reason why you go to the therapist, uh, therapist letter, sorry. The reason you go to the therapist is because the therapist has to diagnose you with gender dysphoria. That is the like legal definition, definition? Diagnosis. Diagnoses, <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. They have to diagnose you with that in order for you to get on hormones. So the informed consent way, you don't have to be diagnosed. You just know yourself. You just go, you can sign it. I know so many people who have done it through informed consent and it's great. It's like fantastic. Now, how to find a clinic that does informed consent? Just Google it. Honestly, the internet is your best friend for stuff like this. Um, because I know that major cities have it but I can't even tell you if Vancouver or Toronto has it. I know, I'm so bad. I feel like Vancouver does have it. I feel like somebody told me about it. But um, I know that like Seattle has it. I'm pretty sure a place in New York has it. It's mostly big cities, but surprisingly, 
uh, somebody on one of the Facebook groups talked about informed consent and they lived in like a super small town and I was like that is awesome so if your clinic or you're if you live like in a small town or even in a city that doesn't have it I maybe like find all the information that you can find of like the people who started it I think in Seattle and then maybe bring it to the doctor and say like maybe this is something that you could start attracting trans people to your clinic just do it also like just like get informed like if you're like a person who works at a clinic just like if you work at a clinic with trans people, but you don't know things about trans, it's like, about trans, mm. it's like an oxymoron, you got, you got it, anyways. So those are the ways to do it in North America that I am aware of. Okay, so now let's like jump on over to uh, Europe, because they have a different way of doing it. And by Europe, I don't mean all of Europe, I just mean some of the places that I know about. Like we're gonna go with like Sweden, Finland, and Denmark. Those are th the three places that I am aware of, of how they do it. Oh, oh, sorry, and the NHS. Uh, sorry, that's in the UK, woo! I am like, I have not had breakfast yet, and I'm just like, blah, 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 in my head. Okay, so in the UK, uh, you go through the NHS, which is like the, like, like the, the, the health care system. Um, and it's almost the same thing in Denmark, Finland, and Sweden, I believe. Maybe not Finland, I just know it's Sweden. Is it Sweden? God, I'm so bad with this. Love me, I'm so sorry. Whatever, it's almost all the same thing. What you have to do is you actually have to get assessed um, by their gender clinic. And then you're able to get appointments and then you can start your hormones and all of that is free. Um, now I know in the NHS, like in the UK, I don't know why I keep calling the UK NHS, um, I know that there are crazy wait times depending on what clinic you go to. Like if you go to the London clinic, I remember my friend waiting like three years to be able to get top surgery, like, but it's free, it's free. And they also have a really good bottom surgeon in the UK, so that's great. But yeah, so the system, it's different, like if you think about like the, the system, like there's like a system in place within their health system where you can go have appointments, get your hormones, get your surgeries covered and everything like that. It's very cool. And there are is a place here in Canada that does it in Toronto. Now the reason why I didn't talk about, is it in Toronto? Yeah, it's through CAMH. Like you have to go through CAMH to be able to get like hormones and stuff like that. Like if you want it for free and all that stuff. But I know that I just saw an article the other day where like the gender clinic thing for kids is not gonna be there anymore, maybe? I don't know, it's very controversial. They tried to like convert, convert? No, re, reparative therapy on children to be like, no, you're not trans. Are you fucking kidding me? Like it was 2015, are you joking? Anyways, so as far as I know, there are three ways to get hormones. Let's just like recap because this video is all over the place because I need to go get my smoothie. Mm. One, you go to a therapist, you find an endocrinologist, you get your hormones, done. It's not as easy as it sounds, honestly, sometimes it could take a long time. I will tell you my own experience. I had therapy for eight months and then I was able to get my letter. Um, it's a very long time. I've heard other people do it longer and then I've heard people literally go to their first appointment and get their letter. Great for them. It just sucks that I had to wait so long, but you know what? You know, waiting made me want it even more. Number two, informed consent. You go to a clinic, sign a paper, get your tea. Like literally bing, bang, boom. Although the wait list might be a little much, like in Montreal, the waitlist are three years. <laughs> literally, I don't know why I'm talking in such a high voice today, but literally, I I had originally signed up to go to the Inform Clinic before I did the the, the little therapy thing, um, and the waitlist was two years, and now I believe the waitlist is more. <sighs> Come on, work on that, man. Three year waiting list to get on tea? Like you might as well just save up money and just go do therapy yourself and get the endo. You'll get it in like eight months. Also, the wait time for the endocrinologist are really long sometimes too. But whatever. And then the third way is you go through like your country or province or states, I don't think they do this in the states though, um, clinic, gender clinic, so within their health system. So you go through, you get assessed, you get therapy, you get diagnosis, you get, it's very medical. Some people in the trans community don't like how medical it is, but you get everything for free and it's like a really great system for some people. I've heard really great things and then really bad things. So. I mean, it's all over the place, right? If there is a fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh way of doing it, please let me know. Um, as far as I know, those are the only ways that you can do it. Please, please never buy hormones. Please never buy hormones online without a prescription. You don't know what people put in that. Like, it, yes, it's, or it's just, it's so dangerous. Just don't do it, okay? Don't do it, it just please. It's so dangerous to buy things online. You're about to inject this in your body and you don't know 100% what it is. Just wait for a prescription. I know I'm saying this as a very privileged person in society who is white and I have the access 
to hormones and doctors and stuff like that. Um, but it, it's very dangerous to do so. Honestly, if somebody came up to me and I knew them and they really wanted to start tea, I would give them like two months of my tea just so that they can start. And then knowing that they would be able to get um, faster on the wait list, the informed consent clinic if you're already on tea. But yeah, so that's, that's all I want to say, how to start hormones. Hopefully this helped. It's all over the place, but I love you all. Have a great week.